Do all those Christmas in July events have you panicking about the holidays yet? <laughs> Don't worry, I'm here to help relieve the stress. Hello, hello, and welcome to Blah Blah Black Sheep, a weekly yarning podcast where I, Sarah Korth of SEK and Made, answer your yarning questions. I am so glad you're here, friends. It's all about stress relief today, so stick with me. It is quite toasty here, so instead of a scarf or a cowl or a shawl, I'm going with a headband today. This is my Francesca headband. I love her a bunch. And we're going to see if I can get her on uh, while you watch, which could be a disaster. <laughs> so people with long hair do this super adorable thing where they brush it all back and then put the headband kind of like up front here. Um, I don't think that looks great with my short hair. So here's what I do instead. I'm going to make sure that I have my front fronting, maybe even, no, no, I'm going to leave that tucked back. We'll see how it goes. Then I'm going to take the twist and I'm going to put it over here by my part. I'm just going to kind of set it where I want it. Is that where I want it? Yes. Okay. Then I'm going to pull it down and I'm going to push it further than I want. See how that's like almost completely over my eyebrows on that one side? Pull it down further than I want. Then I'm going to take the whole thing, full hands here, and I'm going to, with some pressure, push back swoop the hair over and floof the top. And then I've got this cute little headband. I still look like I have hair because I don't want to look bald. I got this nice, uh, you know, volume. That's the word I'm looking for. Volume on top so that I can be like nice and floofy. And there you go. So fun way to accessorize with your handmaids when it's hot outside. I really need to make another one of these because I made this a few years ago with a yarn that was already discontinued. This is the Tweedledee by Lion Brands. I do like it, um, but I really should make one up in wool because it's just great for all seasons. Links to the pattern are in the show notes below. Obviously not links to the yarn because it's done. Bye-bye. <laughs> all right, so let's talk about de-stressing by diving right into our question. I love making handmade gifts for everyone during the holidays. The problem is that I always underestimate how long everything will take to make and end up rushing around in December. It is so stressful. Help! <laughs> I am so, so excited to help you out with this. There is nothing worse than being super panicked at the holidays. And so we're going to start now just to get ourselves organized so that we can have a stress-less holiday. And I don't mean stress-free because frankly, you just, that's, that's just like shooting for perfection and who can manage that? So the first thing I think you need to do to have a less stressful holiday is you need to get organized. Great news, I have made a special tool for you. It is absolutely free. It's a holiday organization guide, and it's going to have lots of tools to help you get organized. It is absolutely free, and there's a link in the show notes below for you to go. You put your, put your phone number in. <laughs> you put your email in, and it'll go right to your inbox where you can download it. Once you have your free organizer, I think you're going to feel really confident to get started organizing and prioritizing so that you can get working on those gifts and be much less stressed during the holiday. So the very first thing I think you should do is make a list of all of the people that you would like to give handmade gifts to. And this can be totally high in the sky. List them all out. Just see what you're working with we can whittle it down a little later. In the organizer, I give a huge list of ideas of people you might want to give handmade gifts to, and then also a blank sheet that you can fill out with your own specific people that you'd like to give handmade gifts to. Once you've got that list made, go ahead and write down just generally what you would like to give each person. So are you planning on making a hat for this person, a coffee cozy for that person, a blanket for this person, a Christmas ornament for that person. Think of all of those general ideas. You don't need to get specific about, I'm going to make this exact pattern for this person. 
quite yet. Once you have down who you want to give handmade gifts to and a general idea of what you would like to give them, I want you to go ahead and prioritize. Now, this may seem harsh, but if you don't organize who has priority in your gift giving, then you're not gonna know where to start. It's going to be chaotic. You're gonna get lots of things going at once, and then you're not going to end up being sure that you can give gifts to the people that it's most important to you to give gifts to. So I want you to come up with some sort of numbering system. I have this little one that's kind of chaos, but let me read it to you anyways. Uh, number one, my scale is one to five. Number one, you must make them a handmade gift for whatever reason you feel strongly about it. They would be incredibly disappointed if you didn't give them a handmade gift. They are the people who appreciate your gifts the most. Priority number one. Number two, it would be people that you would really like to give a handmade gift to. So maybe it wouldn't be the end of the world if you didn't give a handmade gift. Maybe they wouldn't be as disappointed, but you'd still really like to show your love and appreciation by giving them some sort of handmade gift. Number three might be people you feel obligated to give handmade gifts to, either people who kind of expect it from you or people that you've given to in the past that you feel like you've set kind of a tradition in place. And so you might feel less comfortable not giving them a handmade gift. Number four, people who wouldn't notice if you didn't give them a handmade gift or wouldn't mind. They might notice, but they would be like, oh yeah, they're as busy this year. It's totally not a big deal. So people maybe that you've given to in the past or that you would like to give a handmade gift to, but maybe um, it would be less of a big deal if you didn't. And number five, people who don't appreciate your handmade gifts. Now, now, step it up on my soapbox here, friends. I think these people should get an automatic cut off the list. If people do not appreciate the time and energy you put into your handmade gifts, they do not deserve your handmade gift, friend. But, but I understand that that's also hard to do. So I don't want to pressure you to like throw those people off the list just because. But I do think that if somebody doesn't appreciate your hard work, they should definitely be last on the list. You could even simplify this more with like people I have to make a handmade gift for, people I'd like to make a handmade gift for, and people that are like, if I have time left over, they will get a handmade gift. So you don't have to use my elaborate numbering system by any means, uh, it was, it's kind of chaos, but, <laughs> but come up with some sort of prioritization so that you can help Get going on the things that have top priority and leave those things that don't have top priority for either later on or maybe to fall off the list if you just don't have time. Just one more little plug to remember that not everyone deserves a handmade gift. And if people have been disrespectful of your time, energy, or gift in the past by ruining it maybe or throwing it away, you do not need to feel obligated to make these people handmade gifts. I'm just saying. All right, so now that you've organized all the people you'd like to give handmade gifts to, you've got a general idea of what you'd like to make for people, and you've prioritized which of the gift giving opportunities is most important to you, it's okay to think of it as gift giving opportunities and not specific people. It maybe uh, separates you a little bit from the personal feelings towards people. I'm just saying. But now that we've done those three steps, I want you to make a real plan. Now, friends, you do not have to do all of this in one day. Do not put that pressure on yourself. But I do encourage you over the next week to sit down maybe a few times with this list and pick out specific things that you'd like to make for people. So if you said that all of your nieces and nephews are gonna get a hat, then seek out a hat pattern that you'd like to make for them. Along with that, you might think about, could you make the same pattern for several people? You need to think about this in a couple ways. One, is that something you would enjoy? Because your enjoyment in making the gifts is just as important as giving the gifts themselves. So if making the same hat five times, you know you're gonna be really bored with that, maybe that's not something you wanna do. But if you have 10 people to make hats for, instead of picking 10 hat patterns, maybe you pick 
five hat patterns and make it twice and spread those out among the people. Um, if you have like a set of, this happened all the time when I was younger. There was my sister, there was me, and there was my cousin who was like a year older than me. And we always got coordinating things. So like we would have maybe gotten hats, let's say, and all three of us would have had the same pattern of hat, but maybe in different colors. So maybe those are some people you can group together. Maybe all of the teachers get a specific pattern. Um, maybe you decide I'm going to make one cup cozy pattern and I'm going to make 20 of them so that I just have it for all of the people that I want to give little gift cards to. Be a little strategic about where you can repeat things because that repetition is going to make your gift giving be a lot more speedier. That's not a word. Um, <laughs> it's going to speed things up when you're not figuring out a brand new pattern for every single gift you give. Then I want you to estimate time. Guys, I know that this is really challenging, but I want you to go ahead and give yourself an estimate. Is it going to take you three hours to make that hat? No, it's not. Um, <laughs> It's going to take more probably. Is it going to take you four weeks to make a tree skirt for somebody? Um, all of those sorts of things. Give yourself kind of an estimate of time. Then if you are like me and you tend to very much underestimate how much time things are going to take, I would maybe take 25% of the time you've estimated and add it on again. So let's say I think it's going to take me an hour. Instead, I'm going to say it's going to take me an hour and 15 minutes. In reality, it'll probably take me an hour and a half. Things take longer than you think they're going to. So buffer your time a little bit. And then if you are brave, here's the thing. It's super easy to think, I want to make all of these gifts. But once you add up how much time it's going to take you, you may rethink, is that the amount of time you want to spend over the next few months? making gifts? The answer may be absolutely yes, you spend every night crocheting anyways. And so it's all going to be, you know, holiday gifts from here on out. Um, but you may look at that and be like, ain't nobody got that kind of time. And that's okay. But this is then another good spot to either prioritize some people that you're going to potentially plan on falling off the list or to just cut some of it now and just reduce your stress. Then I want you to go ahead and I want you to step back from the plan. So especially if you did all of that like deep diving into Pinterest and Ravelry to like gather up all your pattern ideas all at once, I want you to take a step back uh, after you've done your time estimates because getting away from it can give us some good perspective. So take at least 24 hours away from it come back and take a look again. And maybe with a little distance, you'll see some things you'd like to prioritize a little differently or some gifts that you'd like to condense or maybe swap out something big that you are going to make someone or something a little small. I want you to do one more thing before we put this plan in action. And that is, I want you to make a backup plan. You do not need to make a backup plan for everyone, but I do want you to make a backup plan, maybe for like the bottom third of your priority list. The reason I want you to do that is so that you can easily, as time gets closer, let go and not feel like you're, there's more chaos and stress because what am I going to do now? Right now, while you have the time to calmly think, Go ahead and take some of those people and make your backup plan. Maybe you had planned to make a bunch of cup cozies or ornaments for people like um, the school secretary or um, the mailman or um, people at your church, but they were maybe lower priority on your list of things to get done. So go ahead and make a backup plan. And it can be a backup plan for everybody. So say if I get to December 5th and I am still knee deep in priority one and two gifts, I'm just going to go out. I'm going to buy everybody a coffee gift card. I'm going to spend the extra little money for a cute little gift box. 
and and that's what everybody's getting and that way then you've got a date so if you don't get it done by then you know that you're gonna like time to stop and just go grab something real quick and you have a plan of what that's gonna look like all of that will help reduce your stress I am sure that I have mentioned before that I love the lazy genius Kendra Dachi she gives ways to help you kind of prioritize things and um, feel good about letting go of things that don't really matter to you and organizing the things that do matter to you and one of the things that she encourages and that i use a whole bunch is decide once and that is that for certain things i just have a gift that i always give i give the same thing to the school administrators and the specialist teachers every year. I give the same thing to classroom teachers every year. And having that plan means that I don't need to take up the headspace to be thinking about it later. And so if you've already decided, everybody and this half of my list, if I don't get them done, this is the thing they're getting. And you're deciding that one thing and it's already taken care of, that's gonna free up your headspace as it gets closer to the holidays. And it'll give you a plan to just put in action so that it's still stress-free. I hope that you find these tips super helpful, but here's the thing, here's the tough love. None of them are going to be helpful if you don't put them into action. So go to the show notes, get your free planner, start taking these steps and I hope that they really help you make a solid plan that you can put into action so that you can have a less stressful holiday season. I really think that starting now is the key. All right, I have a little bonus question for you because this is just a real quick answer. Someone asked me, would you tell us more about your beautiful turquoise ring that you're wearing? And they asked for the source. So I wear this ring quite a bit. It is turquoise and copper. I love it a bunch. And I got it off of Etsy. So the person, the person, the shop that I got it from is called Silver Jewelry 20. I will link them down below. I will give you a little uh, personal experience maybe. I purchased three rings from them. They were having a really great sale. And so I purchased three rings from them that I really liked. And I got them and I, I love this ring. I should have shown you, I should have brought the other ring. I love this ring. I have another ring that I got from them that I love. It matches the pictures perfectly. And then I got a third ring and it is this guy. Oh, oh, that guy. Um, I'm going to put a picture of the listing up so that you can see how different the stone looks. Um, I'm disappointed in this ring because as you can see in the picture, it looks like a really deep uh, kind of sparkly green. And this is really pale. And it's very similar to the other ring that I got. So I was disappointed. I left a review sharing my disappointment. I never got a response. Um, but I do want to encourage you, as with any time you do shopping, to look at reviews. And when you click on a listing on Etsy, the top reviews that will show up will be reviews of that item if there are reviews of that item. And had I done that, why can't I stop making this uh, mistake myself? If I had done that, there were other people who posted pictures of their ring that looked similar to mine, and I might not have gotten this one. So shop at your own risk i guess um it is a company that's in india i will say i bought quite a bit of jewelry from different jewelers in india and had quite a bit of success so um i wouldn't let that they're overseas deter you um but just know that like shipping and everything's going to take quite a while so there you go speaking of that let's talk about small businesses i can't believe i haven't had any coffee yet it might be because I ran out of my creamer and I've been using um, almond milk in it and I just don't love it as much. <laughs> so I need to go shopping, obviously. So 
This is a mug from Earth Love by Danny. I love these. I love the carving. I love that gorgeous blue up at the top. Danny is lovely. Highly recommend her stuff. Um, buy yourself a Christmas present now. Put it away in the closet somewhere. Tell your partner where it is or leave yourself a note on the calendar. And when December rolls around, you'll have forgotten what you got yourself. <laughs> It is summertime here and my boys are home and my youngest was very excited to pick out things for me to wear this week. Um, he, uh, he said, can I, can I pick out your shawl? And I said, I'm not wearing a shawl this week. It's too hot. So he said, can I pick out your earrings? So I said, sure. So he picked, of course, of course he did. He picked out my very, very sparkly, stop swinging, my very sparkly these are by uh, Momenti Di Vida. They are gorgeous and fun and lightweight and sparkly. So highly recommend. Um, your kids will think you're cool. I don't know. Maybe not. My, my preteen, he doesn't think I'm cool at all. So <laughs> there you go. Um, announcements. I just wanted to share with you. This isn't really an announcement, but I wanted to share with you something and maybe get your opinion. So I've been doing a collaboration, kind of a, a secretish collaboration with um, Nikki of Avery Lane Creations. I um, did some custom patterns for her yarn box. And as my payment, she sent me a yarn box each month. And this is, this is it. This is it, guys. What? How amazing is that? I'm in love. So I've never had so much yarn that coordinated so nicely. Her yarn is incredibly soft. And so what I think I want to do is I think I want to make a blanket, right? Wouldn't those all go really nicely together as a blanket? You might be saying to yourself, Sarah, why would you make a blanket? You never make blankets. And that, my friend, is a great question. <laughs> I have no idea. So tell me, should I make a blanket? Should I make something else? Should I break them back into like their groupings and make, you know, towels and stuff? Or, or should I go ahead and make a blanket? And if I make a blanket, should I design one myself? Or should I, um, or should I use somebody else's pattern? And if I design one myself, here's my two thoughts I've had for my self-designed pattern. Because why haven't I been obsessing about this? Of course I would be. Um, I, I've had a couple people say to me that my Lumi shawl, this guy, which was my Advent shawl, should be a blanket, that they enjoyed making it so much. They'd love for it to be a blanket. And I'm like, well, that would be fun in this. Or I made my oldest a blanket when he was just a baby. And it was a granny square, but it wasn't a granny square. It was like a rectangle, but it was off-centered. So you worked it like granny square, and then you went around. And so it was long, like it was blanket shape, not square. I don't know if I'm saying that well enough to be understood. Maybe if I'm good, I'll get a picture up here. But um, so guide me. What should I do <laughs> with all this gorgeous yarn? Keeping in mind, of course, that like it may take months or even years for me to get there. So there you go. Thank you so much for joining me today. Really and truly, my goal is to help you have a less stressful holiday season. So I really hope that you take these tips and run with them. If you want to chat about them, if you have tips that make your holiday season less stressful, leave them in the comments, share the wealth. We'd all like to know. Have a marvelous week. We'll see you back here next week and happy crafting.